Pittsburgh. He's also the head of the Eastern Panhandle Home Builders Association, Mr. Kevin Knowles. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, a lot of buzz about that intro that you had with Bill. A lot of buzz. A lot of buzz around. A little there. beep on there. <laughs> Well done, Kevin. Well done. Huh? <laughs> he had to sit on that for a couple of minutes. He did. He did. Yeah, he did. He, he it's was tough to get a word in with the, these guys. There was a these, pause these, waiting for <laughs> laughter. <laughs> these guys have pads in front of them. I got to be careful. You got to watch. You know, you got to watch. You got to be careful. Right? I got my swatter out. <laughs> hey, uh, your uh, friend Steve Williams, we had him on the program last week. He is probably going to run for governor, uh, at least in the Democratic primary side of things and would appear to be unopposed at this time with uh, Ben Salengo's withdrawal. I know you've got great respect for Steve. Yeah, well, Steve and I are, are, are good friends, and, and I'm going to be with him this uh, this next coming week. We have our uh, summer conference with the West Virginia Municipal League, and I, I and I wouldn't be surprised if at that time he makes that announcement. So uh, he's pretty meticulous on, on how he does things. I mean, you've had conversation with him. Uh, Steve is a very bright individual and very, very sharp in, 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 in making decisions. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if that, that didn't come up next week, that he makes that official announcement. What kind of a governor do you think he'd be? I, th oh, I think he'd be great. I mean, uh, take a look at what he's done in, in Huntington. Uh, it's just uh, phenomenal. He's brought them to the you know, national stage. Uh, not only was he, uh, you know, a president of the West Virginia Municipal League, he he also was very very involved in the National League of Cities, and has gone up the ranks in, in that uh, organization also, and chairs some of the different uh, committees that they have, uh, which uh, you know he does very well with. So um, I know that he's had uh, great opportunities to uh, you know meet with the the government officials on the federal level as far as the president and his staff about the opioid epidemic over the years. And, you know, when, when Obama came to West Virginia, Steve Steve Williams was right there with him. And, and it was just a, a great uh, a great opportunity for me as when I started off as a, as a councilman and then took the position with the county as the uh, heading up the opioid epidemic. And uh, he and I got together, and, and we shared a lot of different uh, ideas and and things that worked for him we brought up here things that worked for us we brought down there uh, so it was a great opportunity to collaborate and and I've never seen anybody like him collaborate with people on different sides of the fence that like he does you know this is the first time we've had you in I think since your wife Dana was on the program talking about her new book that she put out the, well hey, you know what <laughs> you, you probably know more about it than I do <laughs> It's quite a story, though. No, it, it is. I, I, I say that in jest. Uh, you know, Dana's a very uh, hard worker and very, uh, uh, when she gets into something, she puts her heart into it. She wrote wrote this book. Uh, it was heartfelt, to, to be quite honest. Uh, when I picked up the book, I'm not a, I'm not a book reader. Um, I read every day, but I, I don't read books. And I, I picked this book up, and I couldn't put it down, you know. And, I, and I, it wasn't because it. Uh, I was afraid that she'd say something if I put the book down. It was, it was that to me. It was that it, it, it just captured me, and, mm -hmm. and and you could see the feeling that she had put into that book. Let's talk about the city of Martinsburg, and first I want to begin with Lambert Pool, and tell me if there has been progress enough there. Well, well, yeah, and you know Lambert Pool has been a, a con conversation piece here for a couple months. But there's really nothing that could have been done to open that any, to open it at all, be based on what they were finding each time that they go in and dig a little bit further. So, uh, the Lambert uh, Parks and Rec came and did a presentation to the council as a whole and myself uh, about some concepts that they had, and and uh, it, the the council has uh, has uh, will be voting on it uh, tomorrow night. But we have had. A consensus to have CEC, which is our uh, contracted engineering firm, that to do a, a study, a comprehensive study on a uh, a splash park, whether uh, whether it be a, a open splash park or an indoor splash park, and that could could and could not in include maybe a pool or not. But uh, we need to know one: can it be done there? Uh, two: uh, what's the cost going to be? And 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 George Karras used to say, if you're going to do it. Do it first class uh, the first time, and then you don't have to go back and, and, and play with it. So we are committed, the council and myself are committed to make sure that there is recreational opportunities for 
um, the individuals in that part of town in the northern north, north part north uh, side of the city and and that may mean that may mean it may or may not mean that that could be closed for you know uh, a year maybe two to get this all put together but in the the end it's going to be a, a beautiful uh, complex one way or the other whatever the day we decide to do with it but we won't know until they come back with the the numbers and 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 do the feasib feasibility because I, I i don't even it's my understanding from everything that I've heard that a pool couldn't even be rebuilt there because of where it sits. That when they built that, they didn't have, I guess, maybe the technology that we have as far as the water planes and everything that's that, that they've encountered there. So, Steve Catlett said for years that was not a good location. Well, yeah, and, and keep in mind that for years the, the city, uh, we, we every year we had to put money into that to patch it up or put a new right. liner in it and everything. So... I think the, the, the long game is going to be that we're going to have a very, uh, very nice facility that's going to be great for that part of town and for the whole city, county, and people that might come to visit. I mean, uh, so it the, won't be open this summer, though. No, you won't, uh, I, as, as I know it, uh, I've not been told that it will be. And, and, and it doesn't make any sense because that it would be closed in the next couple of weeks anyway because of the school people going back to school going back to college that they wouldn't have the the uh, lifeguards to to handle it but uh, you know there's always been that discussion for years about an indoor swimming complex and I, I i totally support something like that but i think that takes a a, a lot bigger group of, of of people to be involved in that i believe you know the the the, the county the city the board of education the cvb uh, with WVU, all these people, we, we need to put, my plan is to put the group, a group together to discuss and actually find out who is actually going to be wanting to be involved in it. And the, and the ones that don't, we just kind of, okay, you go this way and we're, we're going to move forward. But I, I think down the road you will see some type of indoor complex uh, uh, years down, a few years down the road. Bill? Has the county expressed interest recently in uh, partnering with the city for indoor pool? Well, I know we we've not had those discussions, uh, but I've you know I've talked to to Steve Catlett and Steve mm -hmm. Catlett and I talk quite often, and and that's what precipitated having uh, a larger discussion with more people involved. Because uh, you know you're talking a lot of money uh, to to be able to build a facility like that. I mean, they built a facility down in Bridgeport called the Bridge, and it was like thirty three million dollars and. And uh, you know that's a that's a lot of one that's a lot of money for one entity to one entity couldn't do it. So you know who's going to run it? Would it be WVU? Are they are they able to run it and maintain it? Uh, can Parks and Rec? I, I don't know. So those are discussions that are currently going on, but nothing formally at this point. You mentioned the uh, pool was poorly s situated. Was that uh, because of? The convenience for people or because of groundwater rock structure or what, what well, well you know, bill i couldn't you know i wasn't okay. around at that time um i was i was around but i wasn't around here at that time but that it was built so i i couldn't tell you the the ins and outs of it i i only could tell you what what they're telling me today that that you know uh, because of where it was at uh it, it's not feasible to put another pool there based on the information that they have available to them today that I'm assuming that they didn't have available to them back then. Yeah, I, I that I find that very curious, and I'd like to know more about why they're making that dis, uh, that suggestion. So, Steve, so, Steve Catlett yeah. has talked about it over the years. I think it had something to do with the water levels in the something, ground. Yeah, there, there, there's uh, the uh, ground again, structure. The techno technical stuff, Bill. Uh, yeah. well, you would understand more than yeah. I would, and yeah. and I think the people you, you'd want to yeah. talk to about yeah. that would probably be Parks and Rec and maybe sure, Steve Catlett sure. on okay. that. Yeah. Joe. What's been the impact on War Memorial uh, pool? That, since we, uh, you know, we don't have Lambert open, uh, has that been a problem as far as the number of people using that pool? You know, uh, the city doesn't run the the pools, and we don't know the day to day activities yeah. there. But um, from what I'm told, is you know they have made it uh, easy easier for individuals from that part of town to get to War Memorial through uh, the, the the bus routes and. And uh, yes, they have seen a, a, an uptick. I couldn't tell you how much or how big or, or what that number would be, though. Well, the important thing, Mayor, is that the recognition by you and others that recreational opportunities in the in the community is important. So I like the direction that I'm hearing about in terms of 
splash pools and maybe other alternatives out there at Lambert. Uh, let me take you in a different direction. I know uh, when people travel down West King Street, they see construction materials all piled up <laughs> over there by the uh, Woolen Mills. Uh, you recently had a chance to tour there, and, and can you give us an idea of what's going on? Yeah, I, I've worked closely with Monument. Monument's worked closely with uh, the city uh, to work together to try to bring this this project along. And, and when I, I had gone through there with uh, Senator Manchin back in March, and they had the, the studs up at the time, and and I went through there just uh, last week, and when I went through there, I was wow. You know, there, there's actual almost complete units there. So that phase one of their, they were built. They they were actually digging for the outdoor pool that they're putting there, and oh my. and they're putting a community center there for the the residents. There, there they have one, two, three bedroom apartments. They have loft apartments, and um, when I was having discussion. Uh, they're gonna. They're, they are going to start having a rental team put together sometime in December. So uh, they they will be ready, based on the thing that's holding them up. There's some equipment that that is back ordered or stuff to get has has not come on time. And once that comes, you know that moves things along quicker and faster. And I don't. I'm not quite sure is what, what equipment that they're they're looking at but uh, clearly it's something that they need to open up and and they said once that comes in uh, they're going to be ready to start renting out uh, part of that uh, facility and, and they'll continue to move on with the phases but uh, what of you know walking through there it's like wow you know i mean uh, the impact that that's going to make to uh, the city of martinsburg to the county berkeley county and and the residents because not only are we going to see those those um, apartments, but they're going to be addressing the problems that we've had with stormwater management there in the area. So, you know, we're going to they're they're going to be doing new streetscape. They're going to be doing new sidewalks, new curbing, and that's going to take care of 61 acres of uh, uh, stormwater problems that we've had. Uh, that if the city had to take care of it, it could take us five years or more because of all the stuff that we have to go through to make that happen. You mentioned uh, phase, this is phase one. Uh, the following phases that are, are I, I'm sure, on paper right now, but scheduled to, to commence uh, soon, are these just additional apartments, or are there going to be other types of development? In that it, 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 well, there is other types of development being done in there. There's going to be some retail space. Mm -hmm. I want to say about 10,000 square feet of retail space that will be there. There is going to be, a, uh, I believe, a brew pub restaurant. Mm -hmm. That's that's going to be there. They I, I, I toured that and they had some of the the walls up and everything. But the plans that they have for it, uh, for that area, uh, you can start seeing some of the houses around starting to get refurbished and and then with the addition of uh, the garage that's going to be opening up at the old um, Martin Seibert down there, mm -hmm. uh, they they um, uh, that's going to be a huge asset for the individuals that are going to be. Uh, renting that that those type of apartments they'll be able to walk to these types of places and and I see King Street exploding uh, and and the surrounding areas and and individuals there as far as want, wanting to get any of the amenities and everything I mean they're all within walking distance I mean Walmart's there the the, 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 the stores are over there uh, Martin's is not far away so uh, access to everything is going to be very easy for the, anybody that does any rental there yeah, and that seems to be the concept these days with with development now uh and some of these younger generations uh, where they they'll rent apartments or maybe even purchase them but they like to have all the amenities around right. them the, the, the retail shops the places that you can get some you know some groceries or maybe even catch a movie or something you see that down in reston reston town center uh places out around dulles uh, where they're just self-contained communities that offer a little bit of everything, you know, places to eat and things like that. So I, I think that will be a wonderful development for the city. Yeah, and, and you know, you, you know, also, are you holding up to your agreement, Bill? You haven't said anything. I'm trying to get in. I, I got, my, got my hand up, but I'm not acknowledging. <laughs> I just ignore that. I thought, well, I thought I'm, let, I'm, letting, I'm letting you in here, Bill. Yeah, thanks, Bill I, took I, a bow of silence at the beginning oh, of the show, oh, and God. I thought he was like, holding I thought yeah, I was going to lose some money here. <laughs> I, I gave him a stiff arm. <laughs> thanks, Kevin. I, you, you, you gave me an opportunity. I have a couple of questions. Uh, 
the, the community center you mentioned, will that be public access? Will there be opportunity for the public to have functions there? You, you know, I, I couldn't speak to that. This yeah. is a private company yeah. that's going to be running this. Uh, I would imagine that uh, at times there would be some community involvement. I don't know about how easily access would be to, to actually just go up there and to use the facilities. Okay. I mean, I would imagine that that could be a, an opportunity for a rental space or anything like that. Sure. Uh, the apartments themselves, will there be any for middle and low income, or do you know? They're, they're, uh, they're going to be all market value. All market all value, market yeah. Value. Okay. That's, that's that's my understanding. Okay. That's my 15 seconds question, Joe. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to the city manager position. Yes. Kevin, you have to replace Mark Baldwin. Uh, his last day is Very October. tough to replace. October? Yes. Oh, so he's out. So uh, how is that search going? Well, first of all, I, I can't speak highly enough about Mark Baldwin and what he's done for the city of Martinsburg. And, and um, you know, for him to, to step back, uh, you know, he's got a, a, a grandson now that – uh, he and his wife are, are very involved in, so you know, I, I, I applaud him for being able to make that decision. And, and the process now is uh, we've put an internal um, uh, memo out to anybody internally that might want to apply for that position. And at that point, we will take all those uh, applications uh, and resumes, and then myself and city council will uh, interview the internal candidates and based on what we what we see uh, internally, uh, we'll we'll decide whether it's going to be somebody internally or somebody that we would have to uh, put an out on outside, uh, put out put it out to the outside. Right now, it's not to the outside. You also have a new police chief, longtime uh, Martinsburg police officer George Swartwood retired recently, and Aaron Gibbons replaced him. Yeah, well, you know what? I can't speak. More highly of uh, Aaron Gibbons. Aaron Gibbons was uh, one of the first officers I ever met when he first, when he well when he first started, and the first thing I thought of that day was, he's the epitome of a perfect officer that interacts with the community. And I've watched him over the last 15 years, and and the respect that he has for individuals, no matter what walk of life, whether whatever interaction he's ever had, he remembers their first name, always goes back and checks. You miss somebody that he arrested. How you doing? Is everything okay? Can we help you? Uh, and, and I think you're going to see a lot of great things come from uh, um, from Chief Gibbons. Is there a, a transition period that is necessary when you, you're changing chiefs, or was that just hit the ground running because he's been around and he's he's got it down? Well, of course, with any any position, there's some kind of transitioning. But uh, keep in mind that he was the deputy chief, so he. He was in on pretty much the day-to-day -day stuff, and, and now he's, he's able to implement some of the things, the ideas and thoughts that he has uh, to move the police department forward. Joe had a frog hollow question for you before you sat down and we went on the air. So, Joe, <laughs> yeah. let's, well, talk, well, let's I, talk frog hollow. Well, you know, it's an, another recreational opportunity for people in the area. The community uh, likes to know that there's things out there where they can hike and bike and things of that nature. Talk a little bit about frog hollow. Well, you know what? That is just a start. Frog Hollow was the start. We uh, it's a mile uh, path that uh, goes through a nice tranquil area. And, Very nice. And we also uh, have you walked it, Joe? No, I've not walked it, but I, I walked it before. There's a trail. Yeah, there. but there's a little cove there too. I wanted to mention, and uh, in that cove, uh, we've decided to uh, put some memorial plaques there for for individuals uh, that were elected officials that passed away during the time they were in office. Mm -hmm. So for, for uh, you know, Max Parkinson, uh, um, uh, Roger Lewis, Roger and, Lewis yeah. and Mark Baker and, and Harriet Johnson, there's going to be markers there, uh, plaques to uh, identify, like a little memorial lane for individuals to go and, and uh, see mm -hmm. some of our, our, our fine officials that were in office and unfortunately passed away. Now, where do you hope that trail goes? Well, that trail now is going to go at the when the county gets on board and moves forward mm -hmm. with what they're doing, that'll cook, hook up at Route 9. But then it's going to go down behind the roundhouse there, yeah. come across, and we have a creekside plan. Uh, the creekside plan involves where Orsini's is over there and the the old uh, the old foundry and all that. But there's, there's a huge plan that we're looking to do a public-private partnership with to make that a jewel within the city. Uh, and that path will go through there uh, it'll go through Aspen Hall mm -hmm. and it'll end up at um, uh, 
up at Lake Thomas. And Lake Thomas, we're going to start using as a, and you'll probably start seeing that before the, any trails are done, that Lake Thomas will have some kind of recreational uh, aspect to it, um, which was, has been there for forever. And, and it was always my dream to see something happen there and sure. what's going to happen. It's Stay on happen. that for a moment because Brad Noel had a question about that uh, in terms of being open to the public and uh, parking and such for it. To what? The lake. Well, I, I, I'm sure it would be open to the public once we get everything in place to make sure that it's it's safe. I mean, you know, we do have cliffs there, uh, keep in mind. So, uh, you know, we're going to be strategically sound as, as how we're going to open this up. There are areas that, that aren't uh, a part, like close to the lake, that we could put pavilions up in little park-like areas for picnicking and such as. Bill, back to you. Final yes. minutes. Final minutes. You got <laughs> pressure's on. You got the last question. Pressure, uh, Karen. Over the years, there's been uh, some conflict uh, between the county and the city. Uh, there's been a turnover in both uh, with leadership uh, in both. Uh, what's the relationship now? And going back, let me before you answer that question. In the uh, few few years ago, we would have quarterly meetings with between the city council and the the county commissioner, um, and uh, not to get anything done. Uh, no action items as much so as just to talk issues through and see the direction of the other. What, what's been done now? Well, I, I can tell you, I'm going to talk about Kevin Knowles personally. Yeah. Uh, I've always had a very good relationship with the county council. Um, I worked with them when I worked with the county. I worked with Doug and Dan back in the day. doesn't mean I always agree with what, what they had to do or other people had to say. And and that's fine. That's what makes uh, a good government, that you guys have to have that discussion. And, and uh, I, I believe that uh, uh, for the county that they have a great advocate in me uh, to make things better within the city. Uh, whether they choose to use that or not, that's that's up to them. And I, at this point, I think uh, you know everything is going in the right direction. And to go back to your – I remember the, you were part of those quarterly yes. meetings. And um, – they stopped, and then uh, I think you're going to start. It's, we're going to start that up after November when when everything uh, clears the air. I hope so. Uh, George Karras and I were the two that started that, and they we did them for a couple of so years, and I found them to be very very productive. Again, we did not have an action agenda as much as we did co uh, cooperation coordination agenda. Yeah, I think you'll you'll start you'll start seeing those. Good. Good. My hopes that they start up yeah. soon. Bill used to love to hang out with George because George called him a young buck. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is a young buck. Uh, he, he is a young buck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. George is right. George is right. Yeah. Don't argue with How's George. George doing? Have you seen him recently? You know, I have not seen him. Uh, I had uh, people tell me that uh, he's, he's he's doing he's doing good. good. You know, he's getting around, but I have not personally seen him. Excellent. Yeah. I think a, a lot of the mayors, all of the mayors, have done a great job as ambassadors for the city. But I think George is one of the very best. He was a marvelous ambassador for yeah, the city. Yeah, very good. Kevin, final words are yours. Well, you know, I, I, I always tell people that there's a lot of things happening here in the city of Martinsburg. In the last two years, things have been going real quick, real fast. And I tell you, keep your eyes and your ears open. Martinsburg's moving forward. And, and get on board because uh, it's quite the ride. And uh, I'm glad to be able to be part of that with a team of, of individuals, uh, with the council and the staff, to be able to move the city forward. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate you coming in today. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Mayor.